Hi guys, so uh, today for today's lesson for week 12, uh, what we're going to go over is how to tell your story and what your story consists of. Um, so a lot of you guys may think, what kind of story do I have to tell? Well, that's not very different from my thought when I was first asked to share my story today. I was asked to share my testimony um, and parts of my story, and my first thought was, man, what am I going to share? Um, but actually, the first part of the chapter tells you that that's what the enemy wants you to think. The enemy wants you to think that you have nothing to share in order to keep you silent, in order to keep you from sharing your story. And I'll be the first to tell you that as soon as I started preparing for this lesson, I realized I actually have a lot to share. And so I encourage you guys to take some time to think about your story too. Uh, but what first, what does your story look like? So there's four parts to your story. The first part to your story is your testimony. Your testimony is a story of how you began your relationship with Jesus. It's a personal testimony um, about your life before Jesus, how you met Jesus, and after your life um, since you met Jesus. So um, a personal testimony is actually a lot more powerful if you think about it than a typical sermon. Um, your personal testimony, if you think, is um, more relatable, right? If you think about a sermon that comes from a pastor, um, it might be hard to relate. It might be difficult to understand, especially from an unbeliever's point of view. If you think about putting yourself in a perspective of an unbeliever, hearing a sermon may go over their heads. But um, sharing a personal story and sharing that with a friend will actually impact them a lot more. Um, it's, it's similar to like a sales cardsman, right? They're paid to do their job. Um, some may think pastors are the same. Not to say that's the case, but some may think that. Um, but if I purchased a car and I find it to be the most amazing car I've ever driven, and I share that with a friend of mine, they are more likely to um, try to purchase the same car or more likely to um, be interested in it. I went to business school and I studied marketing. And the best technique for marketing uh, an item is actually word of mouth marketing. And so it's very similar to your testimony and my testimony. It's a lot more powerful for somebody to hear your story coming from your own mouth um, rather than perhaps a theory or a principle. Um, the second part of your story is a life lesson or some life lessons that God has taken you through. So um, it's wise to learn from your past experiences, but it's actually wiser to learn from the experiences of others. Um, you don't have to go through the same mistakes, but learning from someone else's mistakes and not doing the same mistakes is actually a lot wiser. What has God taught you from your life lessons through um, perhaps a disappointing time in your life, maybe a time that you felt lonely or a time that you felt um, like you were going through a financial crisis um, or maybe just um, a time where you're disappointed. So in these moments, it may be very difficult, but God teaches us a lot through our life lessons. He teaches us so much through these times. And so what is something that God has taught you that you've learned throughout the course of your life? The third part um, of your message, of your story, basically includes your godly passions. So what's something that God has created you to be passionate about? You know, it could be music, it could be art. Um, these things are a lot more obvious to uh, perhaps yourself um, or to others. It's the talent that God's given you, which is a great blessing, and you should really cherish those talents. But maybe you're like me, where you don't have talents maybe that you grew up learning or maybe a skill or technique um, that you grew up with. But for me, um, my godly passions, and I'll share a little bit more later, um, is something that I feel like I have a keen eye for that other people don't, right? God gives us each a very unique passion and a very unique desire for those passions to be made known. What's something that you talk about so much and you could decide that that thing is probably your passion because you just can't stop talking about it. Um, and God gives us passions so that we can be His hands and feet to the world to care for those things that we're passionate about. Right? It could be um, maybe someone who's abused or um, an addiction. Maybe it's infertility or depression. Um, so what are these areas that God's given you a passion for? Okay, it could be, um, you know, something that God's taken you through that you struggled with. 
Um, a lot of times God will allow you to walk through these things and give you a heart for to reach out to those people groups. And lastly, the fourth part of your story is the good news. So part of everyone's story is this fourth part and it's the life and um, salvation story. It's basically what Jesus did, um, his grace, God's grace given to us through Jesus' sacrifice so that we could have a life that is driven to have purpose, to have joy. Um, and that life that God's given us um, takes us into eternity to have our rewards that await us in heaven. That's the good news. Trusting that God's grace is enough for us and that our sins are forgiven so that we can live a purpose-driven life and a life that's worthy for the rest of our life through eternity, right? Um, so that's the fourth part of your story. So I came to know Christ at the age of nine. That's when my whole family converted from Buddhism to Christianity. At this time in my life, my dad lived overseas and he worked overseas. So he would come back to Houston every once a month, perhaps, to visit us and go back overseas. So majority of his time, was not here in Houston. Um, at a young age, I experienced the Holy Spirit. I knew God and I knew what the presence of the Holy Spirit felt like. Um, whenever I encountered Him at church, I encountered Him at conferences every summer, uh, all the retreats, I went to all of them just like you guys do. And at all of those, I experienced Holy Spirit. Um, but what was missing in my life was the truth, was a foundation in my life. What I was missing was a disciplined life that included discipline and reading the Bible, prayer. And so that caused me, as I grew older, to fall into a lot of temptation. Um, I fell into temptation of lust, temptation of alcohol, um, and I, back, I was a backsliding Christian. So I struggled through that for quite a few years in my college life um, until I joined New Life. So when I joined New Life, uh, that's when I learned um, the importance of commitment. So some of you guys may have heard a testimony that I shared about house church and what it means to you. Um, that's what it meant for me. It really changed me and it changed my view on a Christian life. My life wasn't meant for me to live um, just so I knew Jesus and to continue to live a backsliding Christian life. My life was saved so that I could tell others about Jesus. After I committed to new life, I learned the importance of VIPs and reaching out to them. So I'm almost 28 and I've known Christ right for quite some time now. And it's actually sad to say that I've never been um, able to bring a friend to Christ, a personal VIP to Christ. And when I realized that, it was actually really sad uh, for me to know because I've lived all my life knowing all these things uh, about Jesus and my experiences with Him and it never led me or compelled me to share the gospel to my friends, to my unbelieving friends and family. Right, um, but actually I prayed a prayer last year um, and I asked the adult shepherds to pray with me to pray for a, a VIP of my own so that I could experience the joy of bringing a VIP to church and to Christ. And since that prayer, I've had two personal VIPs start coming out to house church very consistently and um, are actually very close to taking RJM and receiving Christ. And for me, that was a huge testament of what it's like to share Christ and how easy it is because there's so many people that are lost in this world that don't know Jesus, that are unchurched and unbelieving, that need to know the gospel of Christ. Um, and so since then, um, I've grown a lifestyle of discipline and learned what it's like and how important it is to have spirit and truth. Part of my testimony was that growing up, you know, we converted to Christianity. But during that time, uh, my father had always worked overseas. So he would come maybe every month or two to come visit us in Houston and he would go back to South America to work. Um, I didn't realize the repercussions of um, not having my father around until more recently God really revealed this to me in my life in the past couple years when I was asked to go on a dating fast and during this time, you know, I resented it. I didn't want to go on it. I didn't feel like I needed it, uh, but God knew better. And he put me um, in this season to show me how important it was to trust in God as my father, right? He is my ultimate father that no person on this earth can fill. Not even my earthly father, as perfect as he could have been, he can't fill that void in my heart because only God can. 
And so that was something that God wanted to reveal to me, a root in my heart that he wanted me to learn from and to grow in and to heal me so that I can come out of it as a testimony. And that was one of the lessons that God taught me during that time. Secondly, another life lesson during that same season was how important it was to have security in Christ in order to achieve freedom, right? We often hear um, having freedom in Christ, you know, be free, but what does that really mean? And I realized it clicked in my head and God revealed this to me was you can't truly have freedom in Christ um, until you have security in God. You know your place in the kingdom you know that you are a son and a daughter of the most high king that you are a daughter in his kingdom and in that security you find freedom and that was something for me that god really taught me how important it was for me to be secure in my place in god's eyes and that my identity was really secure in him so that i could be free and to live a life of freedom and joy and that others would see that and desire a life with jesus um, and that leads me to my godly passions, right? So um, my testimony and my life lessons has led me to understand what my godly passions are. God's always given me, as I was growing up uh, in my friend groups, I always felt like I didn't fit in. Um, I never liked clicks. That's something that I loathe. I hate clicks. I hate groups. Uh, that's something that I just, I don't like because um, I know what it's like to be lonely and to feel left out. And that's a terrible, terrible feeling. It's not a feeling that God wants us to feel either. Um, and so he's always given me an eye for those that are lonely. You know, when I walk into a room, <clears throat> I can easily spot the person that's sitting by themselves or someone who's uh, not clicking or driving with the group. That's something God's given me a heart and an eye for. And I really long to be that person's friend and want to be there for them to show God's love to those people, right? Because I knew what it was like to be lonely. Um, and God allowed me to feel that so I can have that heart and affection for people that are broken and that are lonely. And another people group that God's led me to have a passion for um, are those that have um, women, young women that grew up with absent fathers. So the people, the, the young women that um, perhaps don't have a father figure, don't know what it's like to have security in that area, um, I really have a heart for because I know how important it is as young women to grow up with a father figure that represents Christ, that represents security, so we can live in freedom. And that life is so different and so much better to know um, and trust in God as our Father and to live and walk in a life of freedom. And so I have such a passion and a heart for young women that struggle with having um, that security um, and having that um, absent father. And I just really love to reach into those people. God's given me that passion. And so I encourage you to really search your heart to see what your passions are. It couldn't, it, it could, it doesn't have to be, um, like you know a musical talent or maybe artistic skill which are also really awesome passions that god's given you for and i really encourage those that do have those talents to really hone those skills um but if you're like me that didn't grow up with those you know physical talents that are very obvious to others um it doesn't make you lesser god's actually given you those passions to reach into other people groups that perhaps other people can't reach to, right? That's why God has placed each of us in this world to be unique and to reach uniquely into others. And the last part about my story is the same as your story. And the most important part that sums up everything is the good news, is trusting that God, that His grace has saved us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And through that story, I am able to live a purpose-driven life, right? We learn this every week, what it looks like to live a purpose-driven life. And I'm able to have that because God's grace saved me and my rewards wait for me in heaven, right? All the things that I do on this earth are really meaningless if it's not for eternity. If you remember one of the first lessons that Jamie taught about the line of eternity and how life on earth is just this small portion and that the rest of this is eternity because it's never ending. So I encourage you to share your story and to really ask God what your testimony is, what your life lessons have been, uh, your godly passions, and summing it all up in the good news 
because I believe that you have a story to tell just like me. You have something that God's taken you through uniquely that's no, um, that's not similar to anyone else in this entire world that you can reach one specific person so that they can come to know Jesus too. So split up in your classes, share your story, and I can't wait to hear it.